Ruler guides can be really useful for creating artwork accurately and efficiently. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create a center point using ruler guides around which I'll build some kind of logo. So I'll click on the create new button. And in the new document dialog box from the top row of intents, I'll select web. And because I want to work more or less at the actual size at which I want to use the logo, I'll enter custom width and height settings of 640 by 640 pixels. That's all I need to change. The measurement system is set to pixels. I only need a single artboard and I can see that color mode is set to RGB and the resolution is set at 72 PPI. I'll click the create button. The first thing I'll do is to go to View, Rulers, Show Rulers. The keyboard shortcut Control R or Command R on a Mac is very useful. Now I've got rulers running along the top and left edge of my artboard. And also very important, if I zoom in a little bit on the top left hand corner of the page, You can see that the zero position for both the horizontal or X axis and the vertical or Y axis are set to the top left corner of the artboard. I'll do a control zero or command zero on a Mac to fit the artboard to the window. Then I'll position my cursor in the ruler on the left hand side of the window, then press and drag onto the artboard and then release to set a vertical ruler guide doesn't really matter where I release as the aim of this exercise is to position this ruler guide with numerical accuracy exactly where I want it. One important point next is to check whether or not my guides are locked. Notice I'm working with the selection tool. When I position my cursor on the guide and try to drag it to a different position, it doesn't move, it's locked. To unlock my guides, I'll go to view, Guides, Unlock Guides, and again it's well worth making a note of the keyboard shortcut to lock and unlock guides. Control, Alt and Semicolon, or Command, Alt or Option and Semicolon on the Mac. Now that my guides are unlocked, I can drag that guide to a new location. But what I really want to do is to move it exactly halfway across the page. Before I position it exactly where I want it, notice the guide is selected. It's a blue colour. If I click away from it, it reverts to a bright cyan colour. Being alert to whether or not a guide is selected is one of those things you need to develop an awareness of if you're new to Illustrator. I'll click on the guide to select it. You can also do a marquee select to select a guide. Then in the properties panel, I'm going to enter an X value of 320. Press tab or return to apply the value and that vertical guide is now exactly halfway across my artboard. I'll do the same from the top ruler. I'll drag in a ruler guide. Rather than trying to position it manually with the guide still selected, I'll go back to the properties panel and this time enter a value of 320 in the Y field. And again, press tab or return to apply that. I've now got a center point around which I can build my artwork. But I want to take guides a step further. I'm setting up these guides to create a traditional compass logo. And I know that there needs to be a circle of 400 pixels that will define the overall size of the artwork. So to help me keep to these dimensions, I'll go to the rectangle tool group and I'll select the ellipse tool. I'll position my cursor very carefully at the intersection of the guides, hold on Alter Option, that's a critical point for this to work, then click. The ellipse dialog box appears, I can type in 400 pixels by 400 pixels and OK the dialog box and I get a circle that is centred on those two guides and that's because I held down Alter Option before I clicked. If I click away to deselect, 
you'll see that that is a circle with one point black stroke. Using the selection tool, I'll click on it to select it. Then I can go to view, guides, make guides. Now what I've got is a circular guide that will help me create the logo to the exact dimensions that I need. One last point, my guides are not locked. Therefore, they can be selected and moved. Having taken a bit of time to get them exactly where I wanted them, I don't want that to happen. I'll use Control Z or Command Z to put those back exactly where they came from. And then I'll use the keyboard shortcut I mentioned earlier, Control Alt Semicolon or Command Alt or Option Semicolon on the Mac to lock them up again. As always, please like the like if you like and click the show more button below this movie for links to my related tutorials. Thanks for watching.